Yep, you got it, compression testing. Something we still do, uh, old tests, we have better tests now, we're gonna teach you those too, but we start with the basics first. So, first and foremost, when we do a compression test, we're looking for a problem. Typically, one of two things. Either we know there's a problem with the engine, usually one or two cylinders, or we're looking for the overall health of the engine, um, like maybe the customer has requested a pre-purchase inspection with the compression test. We, again, we have way better tests than that, and we'll teach you those too, but we have to start with the basics. So, for a solid compression test, there's a few things we have to do to set up properly. One of the first things we should do is take all the spark plugs out. We don't just pull one or two, we have to take all. On a four cylinder, we're gonna pull four plugs. Okay. Something else we have to do. We have to disable spark and fuel. This isn't gonna work very well if I get in there and that engine tries to start while I have this going on. Next up, ideally, I want to have the throttle blocked open while I do this. Not with that marker, I'm not. By blocking the throttle wide open, that's gonna allow the engine to get as much air as it possibly can, especially since cranking is typically at a lower RPM, right around between one and 200, typically about 125 to 150 RPM on a gas engine. So let's see here, pulled the spark plugs, I disabled spark and fuel, I blocked the throttle wide open. Ooh, ooh, I know. I need to have stable voltage. I gotta have that stable voltage, because that way I know that I have the same voltage, or roughly the same voltage during the first cylinder testing as I do the last cylinder. It's best to put a battery charger on the engine, on the battery, while you're doing this test. So now, I'm set up to do this. I've pulled the plugs, I've disabled spark and fuel, I've blocked the throttle, I have stable voltage, now I can actually screw my compression tester in there and run a compression check. Something to be careful about. When you're inserting the compression tester, the hose that screws into the cylinder, you do not have to torque that to 1,000 foot-pounds. Lightly seat it. What will happen is one or more of you in here will end up going out in the lab, you will crank that thing down as hard as you humanly can, and then we're gonna have to ruin the hose to get it back out again. Lightly seated, that's more than enough on these. As long as the gasket's on the end, that's fine. We get our compression tester in there, we hook it up, we have our engine ready to crank over with, uh, with spark and fuel disabled, and a really great way to do this is to have a remote starter hooked up. If you don't remember how to do that or haven't watched that video yet, go back and check that one out before you do this test. All right, now that we're hooked up and ready to go, let's get this off of here. We're gonna crank this thing over and we're gonna actually see what the compression is. Now, a lot of written material says we want four puffs. So you hear the engine, you'll hear it four distinct times kick over and then you'll stop. Realistically, watch the gauge and see what the numbers look like while you're doing this. When you hit the highest number or essentially you see it steady out, stop there. But make sure you pay attention how many puffs, I promise that's gonna make more sense when you actually do this. When you count how many puffs that takes, that is how many you're gonna do every cylinder on now. The key here is consistency. If you do one cylinder to four puffs, do every cylinder to four puffs. If you do one cylinder to eight puffs, do every cylinder to eight puffs. It's also a good idea to run your test twice per cylinder. That way you know that your, your uh, measurement was correct. 
something else important, very important. This should really only be done on a warm engine. If we do it on a cold engine, then we run the risk of our rings aren't sealing, things aren't working quite right. Now sometimes you have to, you have a no start, something's gone on. You're going to see that if you have specifications, printed specifications by the manufacturer, they apply to a warm engine. There are times if you do it on a cold engine, they won't meet spec. So make sure that thing is warmed up. Sometimes you find specifications in service information and sometimes they're not there. What I will give you is a number. That number is 20%. So as long as we're within 20% of highest to lowest, then we're okay as far as our relative compression. If we exceed 20% from our highest cylinder to our lowest cylinder, then we got a problem we need to take care of. All right, why don't we run out to the engine pen real quick and I'll walk you through a complete compression test. Did you get all that? Too fast. <sighs> More coffee. Oh, okay, fine. Let me slow it down. We'll just pick out the important parts real quick and then we'll come back in here for a second, all right? Step one, remove all components necessary to access the spark plugs. Step two, remove the spark plugs. If you want, this is a great point in time to hook up a remote starter. Now we're gonna install the compression tester one cylinder at a time. Remember, you do not have to massively over torque this thing. You only want to put it in and lightly seat the hose into the cylinder. Whoops, almost forgot. Time to get the battery charger. Did you hear that? I did six puffs on this one. Just remember, it doesn't matter if you do four, five, seven, eight just so long as you do every cylinder the same. I'll play that clip again, listen to it, and listen for the six distinct puffs as I crank that engine over. I'm testing every cylinder twice here just to make sure I have stable results, and most importantly, I'm writing them down. Don't think you're gonna remember all these, cause you won't. So keep a written record as you perform the test. And 
done. Did you get all that that time? Okay. Now, like I said, I didn't block the throttle open. That vehicle has electronic throttle control or drive-by wire. Generally, that means I'm gonna have to connect a scan tool to keep the throttle open to actually get a correct test. Now, that being said, that also means that now I have to go uh, do other ways to keep the spark and fuel from happening while I'm cranking it because I have to have the key on to run that through the scan tool. So, we go back to relative. In this case, the numbers were acceptable and they were close enough together that I'm fine with them. If I had a big discrepancy or they were way out of line, then I might have to go back and do this a different way. So the numbers, what we got here. Cylinders one through four. And cylinder four. We had cylinder number one came in at 125 PSI or pounds per square inch. Number two, I ran two tests, one at 120, 125. I'm just going to go with the highest. Number three, I had 120 and 115, so I'll go with 120. And last but not least, number four came in just a hair low. It topped out at 115 PSI. Now, I'm just going to go with our relative difference here of 20%. And that's highest to lowest. So my high was 125. My low was 115. Okay, so 20% of 125 well that would be 25 which means my lowest possible number can't be any less than 100 PSI. In this case I had 115 as a low that's well above 100 PSI. I'm less than 20% difference from highest to lowest. In this case, we're okay. <laughs> now that's basic compression testing. I'm also gonna give a couple of short videos on some other methods. And then later on in the term, I'm gonna give you a really advanced method for this as well, for those that wanna take it that far. But that was your compression test, your basic compression test, in a nutshell. We'll catch you in the next video.